But anyways, that means study and follow Ho Chi Minh's ideology, morality, style, honesty, responsibility, and couple with doing. And this was... Uh, His uh, people were firing off at Dylan's dad for a couple years, I think. A couple years, yeah. Yeah, Dylan. Yeah. Uh, Dylan's dad was in the jungle. But, you know, it's war. Um, and Peter fired back. It's the worst thing that human beings are capable of. But that yeah. baby necrophilia. Yuck. Hi, hello, and welcome to another brand spanking new episode of another Bachelor podcast. I'm Dylan, saddled up next to you, my buddy, real Nick Davis. What's going on, everybody? My buddy Patrick's over there behind the glass. Hi, guys. Um, so this was a bit of a lightning rod episode. I heard a lot of people saying uh, terrible. Heard a lot of people saying great. So, guys, what do we think? General thoughts. Go ahead, Dick. I actually didn't hear much of the controversy. Uh, most of the feedback I saw is what I think. It was not that great of an episode. Yeah. And wow, I'm just kind of looking forward to hometowns because I don't know how we how we stir the pot right now I, uh, to get me into it. I, I can't even believe that we're almost at hometowns. I have zero connection or feeling towards any of these people. Any of these people. A we're couple of them I'm very hometowns. fond. A couple of them I'm very fond of actually, but. Uh, but yeah, I want to get to home. It's Aesthetically pre- or? Uh, their personality as well. I mean, I love Kirpin. I love Tasha. Okay. It's pretty crazy. I agree with both of you. I th- are we five episodes into crazy? this? This was six. This was six It was tonight. six. It's, this is supposed to be when it's really, really fun. And I'm just, I'm not into it, man. Mm-hmm. I'm just not into it. Yeah. Worst season we've had in some, some fucking time. I told my wife this, you know, I shit all over Nick Vile. And God damn it, was he good. Whew. Arizona Missions. Can't wait to <laughs> get to that. Good tease. Good tease. Um, but you're right. It's crazy. Nick Vile was a viable uh, bachelor, actually, yeah. it turns out. Sometimes I don't like us all shitting on the quality of the TV show, yeah. but I have become very confident that d- despite what ABC puts out, we are able to spin some really, really hot, juicy pod. Of course. Just, of like, course. We did, just like we did last week. So buckle up, everybody. Yeah, I'm still yeah. excited to record tonight. I got to tell you, uh, both of you, I've been watching this show, Love Island, streaming on Hulu. Wow. Puts The Bachelor to shame. It's crazy. It's like the, the old MTV days when pretty people were just hooking up. Now we have Colton. Um, I can't do another Love Island podcast. It's so no, hard to start all these social no, media accounts. No, no, no. We will not be doing it. Um, but anyways. Hey, hey, Dill, Dill, Dill. I'm sorry. I know that people like us to get on the show. Can I make an announcement, a little tease uh, for later in the show? Yeah, I kind of wanted to make an announcement too. But yeah, let's both do it. All right, let's both make announcements. Uh, all right, uh, attention audience. Uh, the Facebook group, it's been, a, well, it's like a ghost town in there. There's like 700 of you. So uh, I'm in charge of that group. So I'm just uh, declaring right now that if you guys don't get active, I'm going to shut that motherfucker down. I'm totally with you. And and also, uh, but I, I, I love a, I love I love a contest. And so later in the show, I'll be announcing uh, a, a contest for the Facebook group to get uh, s- some more action in there. Yeah. And uh, my announcement is, you know, we don't feel that the season is that strong. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. And you know, Nick did a lot of math today, a lot of math today, and we need a couple more five star reviews in order to get to that. F- Get to that five right out of the gate. So, 17 specifically. Leave five stars and tell us, one out of 10, how would you rank this season? So, five stars, one out of 10, tell us, what do you think about the season? Oh, man, I'm sorry. I was just fucking uh, daydreaming about all the algebra I did today. (laughs) Just got variables spinning around my head. Yeah, no, it looked like hectic chicken scratch. It was crazy. (laughs) Um, Okay, let's get into the show. We pick up where we left off, dealing with the drama that no one cares about. Um, Colton is pensively walking on the beach after this dust up with Onyeka and Nicole. Um, he's contemplative. I think he's thinking about food. Um, but he's definitely thinking about something. Um, Onyeka goes and sits to, yeah. He's thinking about that burger he had back in the yeah. jungles of Thailand. Yeah. Why can't Hannah bring back another burger? <laughs> um, okay. Onye- I'm so stressed out. I just need a burger. <laughs> Onyeka sits down with the rest of the girls and I guess just continues to absolutely decimate Nicole behind her back. 
and in front of her face. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, Nicole comes and sits down, but, you know, she's shit not, talking. <laughs> she's like, I'm not a bully. And if you say another word, I will fucking crush you <laughs> and give you a wedgie and stuff you in the locker. But yeah. I'm not a bully. Yeah. Anybody ever uh, wet their index finger down and shoved it in your ear? Because that's what's going to happen to you if you don't stop, nerd. Pat, what did you have to say? Or I'll give you a hitchhiker. You know what that one is? Ooh, no, what's I'm that? I'm excited. Uh, it's when you're bending over and someone walks behind you and sticks their thumb up your asshole. Why? <laughs> that's, I that, love is how you so, figured, that is so goofy. I love how you figured it out in real time. Yeah, Dylan. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were about to ask, why is it? Oh. Got I it. got it. Thumb. Very <laughs> integral part. <laughs> Pat, did you have thoughts on the show? Yeah. Uh, first thing I'd like to say is Colton brooding over two nutty chicks arguing and he can't handle it. Hey, dude, wait till you're in an actual relationship uh, and, and see how that works. Well, how would that have any oh living with a chick uh, women are pretty uh insane. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of misogynistic uh comments lately. I think maybe maybe Pat, maybe, and this is just me, maybe. You should start calling women girls, uh, beautiful creations of God. Maybe uh, just anything but chick. I'll work on that. I don't see how uh, two women feuding over you would help in any way in a marriage. No, the point I'm making, Dylan, is he can't handle any drama. Like, get you get ready for some fucking drama, dude. Wait, oh, women are whirlwinds of drama. <laughs> I Notice I said women, not chicks. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. Um, all right, Chris Harrison comes in with a real soft hey man. Uh, <laughs> when Colton's on, walking on the beach thinking of that cheeseburger. Um, he sounds like a like a drug dealer in a teen film who steers a down in the dumps young man down the wrong path, you know? Hey man. Although I, I do like <laughs> Colton does have clarity here. He he tells Chris Harrison, "Hey, basically I got a few girls I'm really into and uh, two that I'd never like to make eye contact with again. <laughs> right. And uh, so we move on to the rose ceremony. Um, Pat, I'd like to know who stays. Oh, uh, are you asking for a roll call? <sighs> roll call! Hit the music! Here we go! Here's who stays. Kaylin, Tasha, Kerpa, a.k.a. Nelly. She's got a Band-Aid on her face for uh, no reason anymore. Uh, Demi, short chick. Uh, Hannah G. Uh, Kaylin. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Katie. Hey, let's get a GoFundMe for that nose job. Uh, Sydney. Oh. She'll be going home soon. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> That's Pat. <laughs> We've discussed it. Yeah. Um, Chris Harrison once again, like poison, seeps into the room to tell us that there is one left. <laughs> and it goes to Sydney, thus sending home both Nicole and Onyeka. I'm just crushed that we didn't get the eventual, what seemed like the eventual two two on one date where they're both left uh, in a desert someplace. I'm I'm happy that we didn't get that because I cannot conjure up enough concern for any either one of them i don't care how i feel about someone investor or not it's funny to see them staring up at a helicopter flying away <laughs> you have you have a point and and gentlemen we decided right at the top of this season that it was really going to be the two beauty contestants that were going to be on that uh two on uh one yeah game. but that's what i said and then he he was like no i think it's gonna be nicole nanyeka and i was actually like good point right and i was fucking stupid stick to your guns nick the egg on my face i'm the i'm the one who freaking said it Hey, hey, gentlemen, let me say the, the proof is in the pudding here that Colton made the right decision. When the girls both get dumped, they both took uh, uh, mutual glee and in, in being happy that it was just that the other one got tossed right. is why they were happy. Right. They weren't Great sad pickup. for being dumped. And yeah. I, that says a lot about that. Well, I think Onyeka was faker about it than Nicole was. Like, Onyeka goes up to him, like, throws her arms up in the air. Like, thank you. Just weird. I, I thought in the beginning of the season, she was going to be our, and egg on my face now, I yeah, thought she was yeah. going to be Alexis. Super uh, fun. Oh God. Obviously, no sexual chemistry with no. the guy who The Bachelor is. Right. Because they're too fun and good for him, essentially. Yeah. Right. Uh, but it turns out, no, she's a uh, better looking Jasmine. All right. So, uh, au revoir. Um, but Colton, um, you know, he's... He, He's pretty shaken up by this uh, this whole thing. Um, and once again, um, clues us in on his greatest fear. After tonight's drama between Anyeke and Nicole, I have so many emotions in regards to how this is all going to end. I don't want to find out that somebody who I'm falling in love with isn't ready. That's like my greatest fear. Well, there it is. He's got another greatest fear. 
I mean, it's the same greatest fear, but said in just myriad different ways and said so often. I mean, he hits like a three or four quota every fucking episode. Just shut up. Whatever producer put that earworm in his head, shame on you. You guys want to go to Vietnam? Good morning, Vietnam! Uh, You want to talk about Robin Williams? Yeah, I was just going to say, I just uh, uh, caught uh, Mrs. Doubtfire on uh, on cable. Right. I watched it all the way through. Of course. Doodle loo! Uh, while I don't understand the nature of their actual breakup, which if you go back and watch it, like he wasn't able to see his kids. It's not like he had an alcohol problem. He was kind of like a... Sally Field was just really harsh on him. That She's just really, really rough on him. I mean... Took him to court at the end, right. and uh, the judge <laughs> says that he can't see his kids anymore. Yeah, because of... Um, cross-dressing and kind of a just a bizarre thing to do it's it's crazy how uh transphobic that movie was looking back now in 2019 shame on robin i'm glad he's gone <laughs> totally uh whoa. <laughs> whoa 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 i don't know where that came from you can't I, i'm sorry <laughs> you this is a lesson learned dylan you have to fully ingest sentences before agreeing with them i don't let them come into your brain not just your ear i want to retract it already to be honest uh uh, he was he was a legend and uh and one of the good ones it's been a lot of talk over so i don't know how easy that's going to be to edit out i think i might have to say it but who knows um okay (laughs) nick you wanted to uh break down some of the signs hanging around vietnam Yes, uh, there was one in particular that really stood out, and uh, you know what, guys? Uh, we kind of talked about it off mic, and I made, I'm made making a decision on the fly. I'm not going to try to do the accent. Right, right, right. I will just read How the word. How come? Why not? Uh, it, uh, though I don't personally feel that yeah. it is offensive to right. try to do my best. At, uh, you know what? Let's, let's let the audience decide. Why don't you go ahead and say the sign in your Vietnamese? And again, I'm just trying to do my best a- accent. This is what the sign said. It was on a giant billboard, and I'll get to the meaning after it. It said, I still think I did it better off mic, off mic, of course. Yeah. But anyways, that means... Study and follow Ho Chi Minh's ideology, morality, style, honesty, responsibility, and couple with doing. And this was... Uh, His uh, people were firing off at Dylan's dad for a couple years, I think. A couple years, yeah. Yeah, Dylan, yeah. Uh, Dylan's dad was in the jungle. But, you know, it's war. Um, and Peter fired back. It's the worst thing that human beings are capable of. But that yeah. and baby necrophilia. Yuck. We're getting a little off topic. Let's get back to this billboard. Um, <laughs> The directive was to uh, really enhance the study of Ho Chi Minh. And uh, yeah. so you're going to see that sign and that, that wording uh, all across Vietnam. You know, speaking of Ho Chi Minh, I know that he is, uh, you know, his, uh, his history still remains uh, an imprint on that country. Uh, Vietnam, um, to many, is a land of uh, blood and horror um, filled with jungles that can swallow up the soul of a man. Um, it's a land of tigers and venom, good and evil. But these women seem like they're having a great time. <laughs> um, it looks pretty chill. Colton's waddling his massive body out of the ocean for another vlog. I didn't listen to Colton. I hardly ever do. So I'm not really sure if he said anything of worth here. Oh, hey, I'm just excited for uh, being in Vietnam. I got the girls here. Yeah. Uh, excited for some uh, group date today or right. whatever. And now touch hair. Yeah. Right. And he was he was bragging about being up before anyone. Uh, I, that's the only thing that I, I, my ears just perked right up. It reminded me of uh, Kevin Garnett's philosophy. He'd get up at five and run on the beach uh, because he wanted his footprints to be the first ones there. That's really, really beautiful. Um, I did want to say that, yeah, that comment that he made really, really got me uh, pissed uh, because that's a 930 sun. You're going to have to get up a lot earlier if you want the ocean's first breath, okay? I got up before anybody. Sun's fucking 
high in the sky. What a jerk this guy is. What they didn't show, but uh, was later saw on the social meds, uh, Chris Harrison posted, uh, Colton and uh, Colton and Chris running together on the beach some uh, many, many a morning. Oh, like Rocky III, uh, that homoerotic scene, uh, the final, I think, 30 minutes of the film right before uh, he fights uh, uh, Clubber Lang. Yeah. Mm. Haven't, haven't seen a single Rocky. Well, that's, that's, uh, I feel Don't bad care to. Mm. Don't need it. They're okay. They're cheesy. I've tried. I started watching Rocky. You know what? It's bad. It's not bad. I stopped watching. It's not bad. It's crummy. I'm not going to even weigh in here. I'm disgusted by both of you. So ABC, never do this ever again. I'm sure that we're going to have some vlogs coming up. This season, never. They're hip. They're with it. They do vlogs. Never do this again. Um, All right. Date card gets dropped. Hannah G nabs it. Mm -hmm. Got a one-on-one with her. Um, It is just so weird that he finds this girl as stunningly beautiful as he does. She is pretty hot on this date, dude. Coming out in that black bikini, uh, great body, uh, yeah, I thought no, this date was hot. If ever, I, I, look, I need to put away my uh, theory or thoughts that he was ever a hom- uh, homosexual. Right. He's definitely not. Yeah. There's no way he is. Right. Um, they they do something so hot. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I get into it? Can I get into it? If I've, I'm worried about you, you're you're right. getting a little foggy back there. But, <laughs> but go flush. ahead. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, they take a shower with each other. They suck face. Then they do this mud bath thing. Yeah. They suck face. Right. And then they do this, was it massage before that or after? She's on top of him, practically naked on his back or he's on her back. Maybe That's where the montage started with the, with the massage it chair. It is yeah. so friggin' hot. Yeah. Um, I got. I thought it was hot. I was kind of turned on. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. No, it's it's something that porn dreams are made of. Uh, it's funny you thought it was hot, Patrick, because I thought, uh, especially when I'm watching uh, the Disney owned ABC, yeah. I thought it to be complete smut. <laughs> I clocked this montage of the making out from the first time her her lips touched his lips on top of that massage table. Forty nine point six seconds of of dry humping and writhing and moaning and kissing yeah. uh, from an erectionless Colton and a beautiful Hannah G. Uh, it, it disgusted me. Yeah, no, um, I, I can tell you're fired up and I'm I'm pretty fired oh, up too. Oh, I'm a fraud. <laughs> oh, oh. I make money off sex. Oh. Uh, okay, let's move on. Before we get to uh, the night date, um, meanwhile. Meanwhile. Uh, meanwhile, Cassie and Kalen, who seem to be both front runners, I think we're all in agreement, mm-hmm. are having a little chat. And uh, Kalen, talking about Hannah G, says Hannah G has gotten by this far in life only based on her looks. The runner up of Miss America says right. some girl <laughs> has gotten this far in life only based on her looks. Right. I, f- I found it to be a ridiculous statement, but as we have found out, Hannah G. Uh, Content creator means people are taking pictures of her. Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know my my sister the other day pulled She's up a video vixen. pulled up a, a bio of sorts of Hannah G. and it said um, when I'm not shooting or scheduling photo shoots for myself, um, I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Well, uh, maybe Kaylin's right. She uh, not only talked about what Nick said, but she also said that uh, she doesn't think she has a lot of depth. Uh, huh. Boy, very cutting. Uh, once again, from a girl who I guess looks pretty in front of a group of people and gets voted on if she's the prettiest girl in the room. Yeah. It's crazy how I missed that. I just think when they cut back, the conversations are rather inconsequential. So I just, I tune out. But what a wonderful thing you just picked up on. Yeah, it was, it was uh, pretty, pretty flabbergasted. God, that is fucking crazy for Kaylin to say that. Hey guys, I think we, can we move on to the night date? Can we move on to the night date? Yeah, let's get to the night date. Night date! Night date! Don't you yell it. I'm sorry. What are you doing? I'm just fired up. He's yelling again. Hannah G says that opening up is not really her jam, uh, but she does. They talk about divorce, which is a difficult topic to broach. Pat? There's just, there's a lot of things that I've closed off in my life because I wanted to be strong for other people, like my parents' divorce. Like, I don't really remember my parents telling me that they were getting divorced because I just shut it off. Yeah. Like, I have a memory, and it's so lame, but, like, okay. 
So my dad loves his job. He cuts it like three times a week. And I just remember the moment of my mom like driving through the yard to pack up all of her stuff. And I remember like seeing his face. It like tore me up because that's like when I realized that like like we weren't like a family anymore. I don't I don't think it's lame that that's your vivid memory because I think it's more than just driving on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean her story is pretty heartbreaking. Um you know, I I myself uh went through parents getting uh Getting divorced and... Hey, Dylan. Look, people mow lawns every day. <laughs> you know, people mow lawns. He's, he's not good at comforting others when they're uh, down in the dumps. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, like when the girl said how she was date raped and then he went and said, uh, what was his stupid story, Nick? When I'm a virgin? I'm a virgin because I dated someone who was raped, so I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> Wow! Keep going, Bachelor Casting. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> okay. Keep going, Bachelor <laughs> Casting. All right. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiots. Returning to uh, Hannah G's story about the divorce of her parents. Yeah. Uh, well, she won. Like, this was one of the times where you're supposed to say a sad story. I found hers to be almost out of, like, a white trash sitcom. Right. Like, about a family. Like, my name is Earl. Yeah. Right. And the dad is out there. Cr- he was out there with the scissors trimming the lawn meticulously. Yeah. Right. And all of a sudden, you see, you hear tires screeching. Yeah. And the mom starts doing donuts in the lawn. Right. He starts crying. She has a mullet. She, she, yeah. oh, the mom does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I little Hannah G, little blonde Hannah G sitting in the doorway with a mullet, too. Right. She's like seven. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's funny that you make fun of it because, um, as I mentioned, I'm um, it's funny you said, uh, my name is Earl. I was thinking Malcolm in the Middle, but good call. He also notes that his parents are divorced. I don't like this tit for tat thing. You know, you're like a intellectual lightweight when your only way to respond to someone talking to you is you have to like be a one upper, right, or connect with just yeah. your own story. Um, Colton doesn't know how to feel for compassion for another person and react to it. Just listen to them. You'll see this throughout the, this episode. I'll point it out another time where he does this later on. Yeah. Um, it's not yes. And it's like, how about that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and not to get ahead of myself, but one note I made about this in summation, how these two people bond is over a divorce. And then they also like, uh, kissing each other. And that's what they have in common so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, they may not know each other at all, have very little in common. Uh, again, don't know each other at all. But she turns to camera at some point and says, I'm falling in love with him. Now, this is a good move on Hannah G's part. Say this to camera. Don't mm-hmm. say it to Colton yet. Let the producers know. I mean, it's, it's apparent, yep. but... Build your narrative, prove that you're here for the quote-unquote right reasons, but don't tell Colton that you're falling in love with him. Not on week six or seven. Don't do it. Hey, guys, when people are dropping love bombs uh, on this show, um, I'm always freaked out by this. I'm going to make a confession here. Uh, You know, I'm happily married. I've been with my uh, wife for seven years. World African-American. That's right. She's black. After the first year, I remember us sitting at dinner. And her announcing to me that I better uh, ask her to marry me in the next six months or she's out of there. Yeah. And and staring across from her at that dinner table, I was thinking, I have no idea who you are. I have no idea who you are. How long had you been dating? About a year. Right. So I can't imagine people yeah. after two months dropping, I love you. And then like when the show ends, they have to be staring at each other and both thinking the same thing. Like, right. what is going on behind those eyes? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. You're 100% right. Me and my wife, and not not saying that any path is correct, but this is clearly bullshit and uh, America knows it. But uh, me and I'm talking about the, the process of finding love on The Bachelor. Me and my wife, we were together for like five years and she was like, we should get married soon. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I have brought this up uh, recently, but I think you two couples should swing. Let's do it, Dylan. What are you doing next weekend? Totally yeah. free. Uh, Cece's in Austin. But, oh, I'll fly there. Uh, I'll get her to fly home. 
No, I'll go there. I'll get there first. <laughs> okay. Um, and I don't want to move on with like nervous giggles uh, from that swing thing. Uh, because it's an inside joke, Nick, when we do go out as a family of five, or <laughs> Nick often says to the entire party, hey, you guys should all fuck one another. And everybody laughs. I don't say it like that. And I then don't he say says, it like hey, that. guys, uh, let's talk about something else for 15 minutes, and then says, hey, uh, well, once again, I'd like to just <laughs> put out there, y'all should fuck each other. Um, and it's a very funny thing he does. We all get a good laugh out of it. Um, and, and to me, it is only getting funnier. Right. I, I agree with you. Um, all right. They dance to a quartet of exotic instruments, and then... I'll take them over to Neil Arts any day a week. That, oh, that, yeah, little, yeah, yeah, that yeah. little ensemble Are they you had. kidding me? They, yeah. they, they had the enthusiasm of someone having a gun held to their fucking head. That's the culture. You think... What? You think that you could play that humid, handheld marimba with a gun to your head, Patrick? <laughs> I, I'm not saying it's ideal, I'm saying that, uh, well, obviously they pulled it off, but they definitely, well, look, uh, they, they didn't seem excited about it. They have no passion. Okay. Um, lest, lest you forget, Dylan, you do not comprehend the stress you are under when you are doing the music for Ally McBeal, okay? Right. It is, it is, it is a, a, a yeah. firestorm right, of a work right, right. environment, and uh, you hit those deadlines. <sighs> yeah, no, it's pretty crazy. Like, Pat's, if you were single, the Tinder profile would be just legendary so there's uh used to rock with ally mcbeal and then there's also when i go out i have epic bar tabs <laughs> and then the third line's like if you're lucky i'll show you my barbed wire tattoo <laughs> someone create my profile uh, okay, we need to move on. Group card gets dropped. Pat, gonna need a roll call. Oh, you want a roll call? Absolutely. Roll right. call! Hit the music! Here's who's going on the group date! Cassie, probably gonna win. Heather, Taisha, looking good. Bring a little drama there. Kaylin, Katie, uh, she doesn't have a nose up on the competition. Hannah, Alabama, Hannah. Sydney's upset. Demi's upset. Now, you forced an incorrect, idiomatic expression into that roll call for no reason. Have a nose up on somebody? <laughs> um, okay. Um, hey, Sydney's uh, really tore up here. Uh, she can't even talk, really. Um, she's devastated that she's not, not getting a one-on-one. <laughs> um, hey, Demi's pretty tore up. Uh, two, the wheels are spinning and they're spinning in the wrong direction. Uh, desperation is uh, brooding here and um, you know we all witness what happens at the end of this here episode, but it's, it's right here where her core is shaken. Next day, Demi refers to herself in the third person again, which is always fun. Uh, they get ready in their yoga wear and arrive at a foam-floored clearing wherein Colton is attacked by strangers. Um, <laughs> yeah, any thoughts on this, boys? Uh, get, oh, I was going to say, in real life, uh, these guys who are two feet shorter than him would beat the living shit out of his One fat. of them. <laughs> one of them would have beat the shit out of him. I, I, I like that he said, in real life, because IRL, I, know, yeah. I know I'm uh, prone to throwing out these conspiracy theories. But uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Don't I fucking don't j fly off the nope, handle I with firmly something believe, insane again. I firmly believe these men were planted by ABC, oh, and and to take this a step further, I think the entire fight was choreographed, and and Colton is no true martial artist. <laughs> Call me crazy. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Oof, we I gotta get know. Sulk back in so these fucking nut jobs can <laughs> talk to one another. I will say uh, I hated every uh, every part of this uh, day date, uh, mainly because it reminded me of that Tom uh, Cruise misfire in nineteen. Uh, I'm sorry, two thousand one, uh, the Last Samurai, in which Tom Cruise uh, plays a uh, samurai. One of his last films uh, that he strayed away to try and be an actor, which and uh, in which he cannot. Uh, he can only play an action guy. Yeah, um, I love the Last Samurai because at the end of the two hours and forty minutes, the moral of the story is. Uh, uh, just like paper beats uh, rock, 
a Gatling gun beats Tech- sword. <laughs> uh, technology beats uh, uh, heart, I believe, yes. A machine gun firing into people running at you with swords and shredding them in half. 67 on Rotten Tomatoes, by the way. Aft. Yeah, it deserves that, I think. Um, uh, you know, I do think that these are capable martial artists, of course, um, who were really attacking him. Uh, but you fucking idiot. They perform. Sheep. They perform. Psh, me sheep, you sheep. You think you're smart because you can break stuff down, but you're wrong about it. You buy into hysteria. <laughs> I've never heard of this martial art, Vovinam. Well, well, what, what's it called? What the hell is this called? I I, I really <laughs> tried to dive in uh, in my uh, yeah. Very, very yeah, light right. Google search to see, to try to find out the viable nature of Vovinam. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, it kind of just seemed like Vietnam's version of Muay Thai. I think it might be semi legit. I don't think it's legit. Um, well, I'm going to do a deep dive and we'll have some more information next week in Errors and Omissions. I used oh. to be a practitioner of a niche martial art, um, a Korean military art form called Hap uh, Hido. Now, um, not as ni- I mean, it's 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 rather niche because it doesn't have a ton of practical use in everyday environments. I think Vovinam is a martial arts that would never be dominant in true fighting circles. I'll move on. <laughs> Hand of the Beast, I guess. I have a note written down. Hand of the Beast. This a lot is of liquid back there. S- s- <clears throat> <laughs> Similar to the goose nickname, this was kind of like seemed like it was self-imposed, and ABC started to run with it. But we never really got the background of where it came from, except that she's a psychopath who grew up in the pageant industry. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, uh, pull the kids out. We've said it a thousand times. Get them out. It's a. It's a. Pa- I'm gonna get fired up about it again. Let's start by ABC's The Bachelor. It is announced that the women will be fighting one another. Um, I don't know whose idea this was, but this is a bad idea. I don't think that there's really a lot of fun that can be had with this. It's either dumb or not funny. Yeah, does Colton really want to have the winner of the date just be the one who beat the shit out of everyone? Yeah. What What is this solving? I like your, uh, your thought process here, Nick, because he's thinking, if I do marry someone 25 years down the road, someone that could take a swing on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it, pick wisely, my friend. Mm-hmm. You're like a you're like a a bird from Boston, just quickly paranoid, looking around. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I've had uh, wine glasses thrown at my head when I'm not staring. I've been <laughs> punched by a girlfriend in the car while I'm driving on the freeway. I'm the one driving, and I have my girlfriend in the passenger seat punching me in the face. <laughs> Very dangerous. That is so funny. You know what else is really funny? Um, that we're introduced to the host of uh, Bachelor Vietnam, um, whose name is Koi Chung, and he can't speak English. <laughs> uh, some damn fine crossover marketing here. It was okay, but I will say uh, Koi Chung is no Fred Willard. Oh, my God. So let's get into the fights. Uh, Nick, did you have these, these couplings written down? You want to take this fight by fight? Oh, what's this face? I didn't. I don't know who Hannah B fought, but uh, she was like, I wanted it to at least seem like a good fight. Otherwise, I would have dropped her. Oh, she was fighting Cassie. She said, otherwise, Cassie would have been out. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was fighting Cassie. Katie fought Demi. And Katie went hard <laughs> to the body oh and dylan we've talked about some of these oh. recent mma fights oh, you know how i goodness. love good body shot yeah. when you shut someone down via the liver right whew, there's you know, nothing more thrilling in watching mma nick watch that is a lot like watching patrick talk about hannah g <laughs> and colton's date you just get foggy. You get quarter chubbed up. And it is a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful sight to see. And yeah, um, I felt bad for Demi because I didn't think that she knew that she had a uh, a goddamn windmill of <laughs> of punches coming to her abdomen. It's just shots to the gas tank. I, I will Money say, in the bank. I will say this about Demi. She gets knocked down uh, very much like Rocky Balboa has been knocked down. But it's not how hard you get hit. It's how hard you get hit. and How you get hard back. you get how hard back you, up it, yes exactly got it and demi got back up to take more punches just like chumba wumba that's I think right it, 
Is that Chumbawamba? Yeah. Yes, that's Chumbawamba. What's down. Blur then? Another horrible band of the late 90s that have no significance in the present. Well, I mean, the the guy created the Gorillas. I think that's pretty significant. I hate that band. I love the Gorillas. Mm. Well, Went to not, see him in concert. Not so much anymore. Not so much anymore. Went to see but... him in concert and a uh, uh, very uh, reverent live show. Uh, the entire band uh, had a curtain in front of them with a light, so you saw the shadow of them playing. Yeah, it's the shtick. Oh, wonderful. I love that. I'm glad I paid $60 and, and, and took a girl that I, I never saw again after that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that first hit they had, I loved, but what I loved about it- Feel turned, good, Inc. Uh, I'm so sad. Yeah. When I'm all bad. But it turns out- <laughs> That part, I, that part I don't like. The but the future is coming up. <laughs> no, that's not it. The verse, you know, that's the one I'm talking that's about. That's what but, you're talking about? Yeah, but the verses, which I did like, were Del the Funky Homo Sapien, yeah, of course. who is not part of Gorillaz. I found that out much later. I mean, that that song came out. Well, Del is featured in a lot of Gorillaz songs. Yeah, but he's also just an incredible artist in his own right. And yeah, of course. I mean, Dan collaborates with the best and only the best. Um until, you know, Little Dragon came into the picture, then things really went off the rails. Like this podcast! Should we talk about ABC's The Bachelor? So Sydney says that it is now clear that Demi has um, a big bark but no bite. This is what you were talking about earlier. What is the expectation here for this four foot seven girl to beat the shit out of somebody? And then you're like, oh, she's got a bark and a bite. <laughs> Night date! Night date! Tasia takes Colton aside and, um, you know, they start chatting. And this is when uh, Colton confesses to Tasia that um, if he's being honest, he really isn't sure what he's doing. <laughs> that Well, yes, but it, it was started. Are you talking about where he said, like, uh, hey, sometimes I'm sitting on a group date with, like, 13 girls staring at me, and they're like, hey, this guy must know what he's doing. And in reality, I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, Patrick, that is what I was Oh, okay. To. But uh, it, was, it was another case of... There, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the context here, Dylan, yeah. is that Tasha tells him, hey, uh, Colty. Uh, I'd like a little bit more curiosity from yeah, you. And yeah, and he yeah, says, yeah. "I completely uh, get what you're saying. Um, uh, when I'm on a group date, uh, <laughs> I've got a bunch of girls staring at me, and they all think what in what's inside my head. But I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then I." Wow, everything's good after that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of talk in their conversation about being vulnerable. And dare I say, being on a show where you're willing to be judged by a person you've never met with a bunch of cameras around is being vulnerable. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought it was funny that Colton began giving her relationship advice. <laughs> what, what did he say? What was his advice specifically? You know, I said earlier that when he talks, I don't listen. <laughs> so I'm not sure, but I do have a general idea that it was relationship advice coming from someone who's never had sex that's about right um i feel bad because um you know as we find out tonight she's absolutely doomed um she knows that she's doomed at this point she's like a dog like you see it has a limp and you try to kind of put it away but oh, it's, wait. it's cancerous and it, it will eventually claim the body of the dog and the soul will pass on that's what is happening to to katie <laughs> that I feel like at some point <laughs> yeah the only thing to honestly you can do is put the dog out of its misery are there any like known like ways to do that humane ways yeah I mean yeah there's um like a barn Dylan <laughs> like, a, like a barn <laughs> let me take <laughs> Yeah, like you know the uh, the old adage um, about the barn and you know going behind it and uh, blowing a bullet into the back of its head. Is that what you're talking about? There's there yeah there's a there's an option so common. There's an <laughs> adage about it that's crazy. So we want to take Katie behind the barn and shoot. No, her. <laughs> I do not want to do that. I wish her the best, and I'm I'm happy that she's off the show. We'll get to it later. Um, Hannah B is having a blast here, guys, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, Pat, you want to hit us with a clip? Mm. Oh, this is perfect. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Good. Good? You had fun today, didn't you? I did. I can tell. 
<laughs> we're getting after it. You know that? Uh, yeah, always. I know. I know you know because you were having a blast with it. Yeah, I mean, I kickbox at home. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I was wondering. I, I was wondering where the background was at because you looked very comfortable. Yeah, I've been having a good time, and I feel good with everything. Do you feel good? Yeah. About me? Yeah. Okay, you're taking shit. Yeah. <laughs> I listening back to that, I can hear not a hatred of her, but um, generally like a, a dismissiveness of her and a, even a condescension towards her when he talks. Um, he does not like her at all. And I feel bad because, you know, I've grown to like Hannah because she's uh, she's having she's just having a blast there. She's having a good time. She's just having a blast. You're exactly Let right. Let me just say this. This young lady at some point <laughs> is wearing a pink onesie. Yeah. Dancing. Loved it. With sw- swimming pool noodles. We all know what noodles are, right? Those, no, no, I don't. Those are the, the those are those like uh I, I was kidding. Are you talking yeah. about Colton's limp dick? Oh. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah, I know what a, I know what a pool noodle Her is. Her yeah, face yeah. when she's talking to him looks like the the fucking joker. Uh, she's completely loco. Right. She just wants to see the world burn. I wonder what Batman would say about the Joker, uh, watching the world burn. You can't. <laughs> Hi. See, I got it. It's there. I don't feel like doing it right now. I have no <laughs> four <laughs> eyes on me. I can't do it right now. <laughs> Hannah B is having a, a, a blast, as we said. Uh, but and, uh, somebody who's not having a blast is uh, Sydney. She's getting really cheesed off watching mm. her. Um, really cheesed off. And, you know, uh, this is where this narrative uh, starts starts building, that there are people here who aren't ready for you. Um, everybody's just having a good time, Sydney. Uh, just because you're boiling over and losing it doesn't mean that they aren't ready. Sydney's frustrated as fuck. She has, like, look, she's stuck around too long. Uh, this is interesting about this franchise is there's always a couple contestants that have overstayed their welcome. The audience knows. Everyone knows. Production knows. How don't they know, but they're frustrated? I think it uh, works a little you better. You say, um, are you picking up on this? What? Uh, the word frustrated, how Pat says it? Frustrated. That time I did. <laughs> You're missing that first R. Frustrated. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be a joke. Sometimes I think he's comedic genius, and sometimes I think he, like, is he trolling us? That first R? Frustrated. <laughs> that, yeah, are you yeah. assholes? He All was right. trolling Hold us. on, hold on, hold on. No, he definitely wasn't. That's how he talks. He <laughs> says mum, pup, and frustrated. Uh, she, she goes up and bodies him. Um, and she says, uh, where is my one-on-one? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? I um, I kind of just shit on her because I do think that you shouldn't project it, unpreparedness in a relationship onto people who are just doing better in the competition than you. But she is trying to figure out, hey, I think this is bullshit. I'm going to go figure out if this is bullshit. And if it is, I'm going to leave, which is admirable. Um, You know... I think by week six, if you don't have a real connection with the the bachelor or bachelorette, right. then you know it ain't gonna happen. Then just drink all the free liquor and you know travel a little bit more, get the free trip. Right. Although, not to get ahead of myself. Yeah. Kerpa is a prime example yep. of someone who's kind of been around in the background. Yep. And perhaps we may see her uh, come Z- to the front. Uh, no, no, no. Well, 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 zero chance of winning. But, but yes, Kerpa has uh, has lasted a long time. She's she's a more substantial. You, know, you guys are going to bristle at this, but she's akin to a Josephine. Um, ooh, ooh, that guys. What I'm going to I mean, physically we, hit you. I think we love Kerpa, but what's Kerpa doing here? I like. I like. He was saying how Sydney has overstayed his well or her welcome. I, I. I. I think she's more Josephine than Kerpa has ever been. Josephine, one hundred percent. Nick, uh, let's put some old shekels. Uh, uh, yeah, like yeah. Old Josephine. You you put some shekels on Sydney real early, and uh, you would have been a really rich man if uh, she hit. She didn't. But that's why you do it. It's going to change your life. Yeah, a horse has three legs, uh, comes out of the gate, quickly falls back in the pack, but um, all of a sudden starts to run pretty quick, get on the heels of the top five, and then surely falls, um, and then is ultimately sent to uh, to 
provide us with uh, Jello and glue products. Um, you don't even have to put it to win outright. You put it right in your trifecta. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. You're still gonna get yourself a nice little payday. I don't think <laughs> I don't think they uh, uh, make Jello out of horses, uh, Dylan. I'm gonna have to fact check that, sir. They uh, do in glue. Well, glue I'm okay with, but the Jello thing I don't think so. I think well, that's glue, real. Uh, I mean, I, it may be pigs and and cows, maybe just pigs, but I, it definitely hooves uh, are a, a very important ingredient in Jello. How did you not know that? Well, I, I always uh, uh, used to read ingredients as a child, and I believe very that weird. The main ingredient of uh, of gelatin was uh, yes, yeah, some kind of uh, I thought it was an egg. But maybe the, no, you know what? That's there's tapioca. Egg, there's egg, there, yeah, there's that's egg. tapioca. I'm sorry. We are. I'm sorry. When Let's s- get back to it, please. When, when Sydney uh, questioned why she couldn't, she was frustrated about the one on ones. I have to say, I don't have a clip for this, and maybe you guys remember this. Colton fielded this question or this interaction very, very well. I thought it was going to fall flat. She's like, yeah, she's doing a deposition on him, and he's he's doing okay. In summation. Leave on your own terms, Boo Boo. Do you, Boo Boo? And I, I'm I'm happy that she. Uh, I think she made a graceful exit. Uh, before we get to her graceful exit, we got to talk about Demi and Colton. Um, <clears throat> Hail Mary! This is better than a hometown. I think <laughs> this is so sad and hilarious. And then the. The post credit scene. I mean, Jesus Christ. But uh, Colton sits down and she essentially says, um, hey, do you want to call my freshly released mother? Do you want to call her now? And they they do. Oof. Bad move on Demi's part. Uh, Hi, Tina. And. uh, and Oh, did she call her by her first name? I believe so. That's how I, I have the name Tina. And then uh, Colton says something really stupid. Do you remember what it was? Um, no. He said, uh, you raised a great daughter. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. And then I question, well, I don't know if you actually raised her. <laughs> I don't know how long you've been in fucking prison. And, and what's weird is at the conclusion of the phone call, uh, Demi says, uh, this is something I'll cherish forever. She also says, I can't wait for you to meet him in person, which is absolutely brutal, um, knowing what we know happens at the end of this episode. But. Especially because I bet the producers all season have been like, Demi, we're going to we're gonna go see your mother, we're going to go see her. And then all of a sudden at the end, they're like, you know what, why don't we call her now, you know, just to like play some <laughs> groundwork? I swear, no, you're fine. Right. You're still going to, we're going, yeah. no, but let's call her now. Let's hey, get her out. Let's, we're going to get Tina now. We're going to need to get this interaction now. You'll have have it later but let's just get it now we just want to we we want colton and tina to have some familiarity before we uh get to your hometown which yeah, we're definitely yeah. gonna do demi no, you're a star you're a star you're a star <laughs> all in all a very very sad situation with a mom named tina not mom and just prison just demi's I, demi's fucked up man yep she is she's a very strong woman yes um I will say this, uh, if whether it be producer intervention, as you guys alluded to, or whatever, just she could, she seems smarter than this to allow a phone call like this happening. Like you're fighting for your life to stay on this show, and this is your move to go to. Yeah, seems like a last resort. As I said, uh, as before we started talking, major hail mary. Let's get back to Sydney, who has made her choice, um, and that choice is to tell Colton that he's making easy choices and then she leaves this has to be eroding him is this the third girl or just the second girl to just cut out and go like i'm done i'm leaving i know it was elegant elise this is sydney leaving was there one other girl that's like i'm cutting out or just the two he put that uh vapid canadian he put her home i don't that was that was the other one that left early but but yeah she did leave mighty early um and she was vapid and Canadian. Yeah, I guess so. This is why he's connecting with uh, Loco Hannah, Hannah B, because, again, the Chino- uh, Chihuahua thing. He's not connecting with her. No, he's not. I'm sorry. I, that, I take that back. He's finding comfort in her. Yes, because she makes him feel like he's not going to be dumped. He and thinks there's disdain for her. We have seen the photos of Colton at 14, which was just 10 years ago. Yeah. This little sad, fat boy sad, sad, sad is still thing, in his yeah. head. Now he's thinking. I remember, he tries convincing her to stay. At one moment, he s- sits back in his uh, patio chair and he's like, "Well, uh, let, guys, please let's get in the mind of this guy. This is a fat little kid, right? 
uh, used to beat off into a tube sock to Jessica Alba uh, and then hide that tube sock, uh, sock that he blasted in under his bed and then uh, go play some Ice Cube or something. I don't know. Uh, he's very... Uh, He's very upset. You know, can we talk about the tube sock thing real quick? I know that that's... I would love to get into this whole topic. That is something that is, um, you know, you see a lot in TV film. It's just in the zeitgeist, uh, little boys uh, shooting the tube socks. And I have to say, I have never done that. I've never spilled my seed inside a sock. Well, uh, Dylan. I don't know how it works. Do you beat off and then shove yourself in real quick and just spray? There's a lot of masturbators out there. Actually, all of us are masturbators. You, It's where you choose your location to drop your seed. Now, I have uh, transformed into only masturbation in my bathroom. Right. But as a young lad, it was in my bedroom. Uh, with, with some Vaseline. Well, you live with a woman now, and you sleep in the bedroom with her. So I would hope that the activity has been She'd relegated She'd be very to upset bathroom. to find the tube socks under the bed. She'd be very upset to, to turn over and watching you watch some of the most, I can only imagine, the most insane porn that anyone watches. Um, it would startle her at 1230 at night. Truer words have never been spoken. Um. I actually saw an interesting poll recently, and it was neck and neck. It was towels versus tissues oh. for your for what you use yeah, yeah, to jerk yeah. off with. Right. And uh, how fif- how is that fifty fifty? Fifty two percent was uh, wow. towels. That it was is so crazy because you got to put them in the laundry, right? And the fact that a tissue. Uh, uh, I use the towel. I just won't. <laughs> uh, but, you use a towel? But the tissues makes a paste. Yeah, you wash it. Yeah, it's usually... A paste? Yeah, and it'll stick to the head of the penis. I think Andy from... You have got to be kidding me. We're going to get to the show, but I just want to... <laughs> no. I don't understand how this works. You release into a towel that is not disposable. It's something that you must wash. It's one use. You put it in a fucking in the in the hamper. Well, I think Nick is gonna. Oh, oh! I, if that's multiple. just dis- why not use tissues? You're shooting into a, a towel. Giant numerous big times. towel. You, you you have a giant big towel that you're like, oh, rope there, rope there. Tomorrow I'll come back. Oh, a couple more. Toss a couple more ropes on there. Oh, it's gonna sit in the corner of my bathroom. Two like, out of three. Festering days. cum, dried cum on a towel. Oh, pick it up again. Shoot some more cum onto that. That is disgusting. Fifty-two percent of people agree with me. Well, that's, men are disgusting. That is so crazy. We're heathens. You know what that's like? That's like wiping uh, ass to balls. That's what you're. It makes no sense at all. That's how you get a urinary tract infection. I would filthy like you are. I, I would love to uh, give a shout out to Bid Elegance. Uh, speaking of wiping your ass, you're just gonna. You, it, it, it's just, it's a, just a dry clean, a, a wet dry clean. Just put it, some of it on your tissue paper. Get it on Amazon. Bid Elegance. Use promo code Another Bachelor Podcast. All one word. How's that? Our very first ad. You didn't think that was happening, did you? Bid but a, Bid what Elegance. you didn't. Bid no. Elegance. What you didn't know was that that entire conversation of masturbation was shoehorned into the podcast naturally and brilliantly so we could get to our very first sponsor. And now, back to the show. Back to the show! So he comes back and is essentially like, whoa, well, (laughs) good news, everybody. (laughs) Sydney's gone, which means I get to spend more time with um, two of you that I like and the rest of you. Welcome to the spin zone. Not like I just got my ass dumped. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, Let's... I should mention he gives the rose to Tasha. Mm-hmm. Yes, he does. Uh, next day. Kerpa has received her first one on one. And I count and I can't help but think, why are we doing this? <laughs> Kerpa is crying right out of the gate, very, very early on, which is never a good sign. Uh, better news is that it seems as though she's healed. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Band-Aid is gone, stitches have been removed, and we've got our Kerpa back. 
I would say physically, but uh, not not completely healed emotionally, as we right. saw from those tears because of her relationship with uh, Sydney. And I will say, uh, she has many very positive qualities, but uh, one mm. one skill she is not adept at is the the cliche leg wrap around toddler jump, the toddler jump yeah. into the bachelor's arms uh, at the beginning of a date because she. Uh, I don't know. She barely got up there, right? And uh, despite Colton's uh, f- uh, flab, uh, he is strong, so it wasn't his fault. She kind of sagged there. It was just lack of enthusiasm. Yeah, totally. It's not. Uh, maybe it was that heavy heart weighing her down. Yeah, it's yeah. not committing to the vert. It was lackluster. Yeah, all yeah. around. And all around. He has beef. Um, she lollygagged. Right. Uh, yeah, you're 100 percent right. Um, they kick things off by talking about Sydney, and then they talk about how they're making leaps and bounds every week, Oof. which is absolutely insane. That was insane. That's just not happening. That's like calling the sky orange. You're no Bob Beeman. Mm. Huh? He at one point had the uh, Olympic record for longest uh, long jump. Got it. Oh. Um, for for like 30 years. It's been since destroyed. So um, I, I probably said his name wrong. I don't think that she likes him. Um, hot take, but I, she's just very, very chill. I think she's too chill. I think she's too smart for him. Has a real job. Has a real job. I don't think that she really wants anything to do with this um, guy. And, and as a man who has dated two Indian women, uh, you know, I dated an, uh, an Indian girl. Don't no. do the voice. Oh, no, I won't do it. I won't do it. Uh, I dated uh, call, a girl named uh, An- Anitu. Uh, and we dated for an entire year. I met her brother, but she would not allow me to meet her family because uh, the, the Punjabi uh, women, uh, that's the northern part of India, they do not allow their uh, children to date white people or outside their race yeah. unless it's completely serious. So we had right. to date for a year, at which point she said, do you see us getting married while we were lying in bed? And I said, no. And she said, well, this is the last night we will see each other. And she got in her car the next day, drove off. I never saw her again. A year later, I saw on Facebook, she got married. Mm-hmm. Did you make love? Oh, yes, we did. I think this woman's come up on the pod before. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Sounds like she took a little piece of your heart with her. Well, maybe she uh, maybe she uh, DM'd me when she saw my engagement photos. Oh. I can neither uh, say that was true or deny it. Well, why would you say it then? I don't know. You volunteered the information and said, oh. oh, I can't say if that's right. Yeah, it wouldn't even cross my mind that she did that unless you mentioned it. So what did she, because it's true, but what did she say? You know, um, uh, 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 Kerpa and Colton go diving. Yes, they do. Um, they go on a boat, they go snorkeling, and I have to say, Colton's board short game is oh abysmal. Um, he is stuck in a target in 2010. Um, I feel attacked. Uh, if that's the kind of ocean wear that you're rocking, I mean... I'm pretty hip with it. I'll wear something above the knee. Yeah, gotta be above the knee. I mean, everybody knows that it's, you know, it's what year? 2019. Wear a short above the knee. Well... Um, <laughs> What? I'm woke. <laughs> Wear short above the knee. Whoa. Um, My thigh, male, male thigh's okay. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, so anyways. <laughs> um, Anybody else have a problem with uh, the pun that he uh, raped us with? Raped? <laughs> raped us well, with a pun? Well, they went scuba diving and he said uh, he wants... He wants to go deeper. Words hurt, Dylan. Like this tool thought of that. He's so clever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. He is, uh, he, he is a... Uh, They've done a Word couple. Smith. He's a clever cat. They've done a couple puns that, that have just uh, fell flat. Right. Not a pun. You hate oh. to see that. <laughs> um, yeah, and while they're in the depths, um, they lance Uni and they uh, suck said uh, gonads down with uh, lime juice, which looked absolutely fantastic. I have a very expensive taste, and I love uh, a good Santa Barbara urchin. <laughs> Much of that was lost on me, but uh, it sounded it fancy was. as shit. Uni Nick. is a sea urchin. Uh, <laughs> Sorry? Isn't that one of nature's most powerful aphrodisiacs <laughs> next to fear? Uh, it, not co- next to fear, quite beneath fear, of course. But, but it is, right? It, that, that'll get you a fucking... Oysters, I believe, is what you're referring to. Now. That is, that definitely is, uh, but um, what's, uni? Uni, what's uni short for? Well, uni is a sea urchin. urchin. But is it is it just uni? It's not okay. Whatever. I'm sorry. 
wrong? Of course you cannot appreciate this. Of course you can't. You eat cold hot dogs out of a package. <laughs> I haven't done it for months. months. Yeah, months. <laughs> and I'm I'm proud of you for that. Um, as disgusting as your fat sal uh, habit is, um, at least you're not ripping open a cold pack of Nathan's and sucking them down with l- very little use of your teeth. I like me a nice ballpark, to be honest. Um, okay, so we have got Jordan. to move on to the night date. Night date! Colton says he wasn't sure how she'd be in the water. How come that? What did he graft onto her? What? Indian people can't swim? No way. <laughs> I told you not to do that voice. <laughs> but you guys find her attractive? Uh, very much, very much so. And I think she's got that perfect combination, not to sound Ryan Gosling in uh, Crazy Stupid Love, but the perfect combination of sexy and cute. Guys, before we move on, let's um, take a take a pause, take a breath, just to get to a, um, a little announcement, a little segment that Pat's prepared for us. Uh, harp. Hi, everybody. I know you miss me. You know, we haven't done a, a segment with me doing the segment in quite a while, but I feel like it's really important for me to get ahead out, uh, get ahead in, uh, uh, of, uh, of lots of uh, lots of issues. Right. Yeah. First off, nothing's going on in that goddamn Facebook group. Right. Uh, so I've decided I'm going to shut it down this week, unless people start uh, being more active in there. And uh, one way to get people more active, I've learned, is to pit people against each other. So this is how we're going to do this. <clears throat> I'm announcing a formal contest. Uh, it's called the Ugliest Dog Contest. Uh, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, I talked about my uh, chihuahuas and how much uh, Dylan hates them. Disgusting. And then one of you listeners started posting a picture. Your ugly fucking dog. Uh, a really ugly chihuahua. Right. Uh, uh, very ugly. Glad dog. I didn't see it because I'm too busy to be throwing up. All right. So here's the deal. You can just say chihuahua. Right, right. So here's the deal. This is the contest. Uh, listeners, uh, you need to post a picture of your dog. It doesn't have to be a chihuahua. I'll start the feed on Facebook. You guys don't just start randomly posting pictures of your dogs, okay? I'm going to start the feed, the official feed, you can. where uh, you, you will post a picture of your dog, the name, and the age. Next week, at this time, uh, Dylan, Nick, and I... What will time? De- it's a podcast. <laughs> well, we're going to decide who the ugliest dog is. We'll discuss why it's so ugly. Uh, and uh, the people uh, that, that don't win, we're going to kick you out. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a risk here. So if you post your dog's photo thinking that we're going to pick that dog and it doesn't win, we will immediately kick you out of the group. And, and, that, and that's how it's going down. Mm-hmm. Dictatorial. Like, we've got no input in this at all. He's just saying that uh, in order for the Facebook activity to, to pick up... I'm all for a bloodbath. Uh, submit at your own risk. If you believe your dog is the ugliest dog, or maybe you think we'll think it's ugly, then yeah. put it out there, dudes. I and think I'm, I think I'm, we're we're getting dangerously close to a, a fight club type situation with these dogs. But you know, uh, let, let's take this first uh, toe in the water step and, and see where this goes. And before next week, I, I do want to say I would love to discuss the consequence of it because uh, I love seeing dog pics and I don't want such retribution for uh, having a cute so. dog. Damn it, I thought it was going to end there. Uh, they sit down and um, we discover that she was in an eight-year relationship with a guy who was saving himself for marriage. That's a bomb. Where are they finding these people? I mean, it's crazy. Um, eight years. I was Quite abrasive. But apt. Pat, uh, hit us with a clip. Knowing you've been there before. Yeah. And I haven't. I can commonly say, like, I'm excited to be engaged. That is something that I really want out of this. And I, I mean, I just want to straight up ask you, do, can you see yourself if the feelings are there getting engaged again at the end of this? If we keep progressing how we are, I would 100% be okay with saying, yeah, I want to be engaged and yeah. 
That makes me happy. Okay, good. <laughs> Lie. Mm. Here's my issue with this, uh, you piece of shit. Um, Her or Colton? Him. Him. Um, dude, unless you have real feelings for this girl, don't start saying that stuff. And this is where the immaturity uh, comes in. Hey, uh, dude, uh, if you plan on letting her go next week, don't even bring this up. Uh, Right. Oh, God. It's really weird. I know. It's going to be a real bad look if she does go home next week. Uh, Right. But she has a good shot of going home next week. 100%. But him coming off being dumped uh, week after week by girls just going like, hey, I'm out of here. I, it's again, I, I mentioned it. It's eroding his self esteem. So now he's trying to build a contingency of girls that he knows are into him. So he's protected. To elaborate on his point about him keeping around the people that only seem to be really into him, uh, I think the problem with his his philosophy, the people that seem to be really into him are the girls that I think are thirsting for fame and are willing to just completely make out with them uh, unabashedly to Hang to on. stay further yeah. and possibly get their uh, their shot at the Bachelorette. Cassie and yep. Hannah, yeah. Whereas he's, he's getting rid of people who, though they're not as forward, Katie and Sydney, genuinely looking for love, I think. One girl who um, I think he does know is into him is um, young Demi. Uh, Mm -hmm. We have to get to the crescendo of this episode. Uh, Something that I've called the night-night date. Night-night date! Okay. Uh, That that went good. Uh, Demi goes over. Balls to the walls. (laughs) Okay. Demi goes over to his house and and quite literally says, who knows, he may not be a virgin after. Down to fuck. DTF. What's he doing right now? I don't know. Try Down to it. fuck. DTF. Um, trying okay. to wrap it up. She tells him that Denied she- it on her Instagram today. By Denied the what? Well, a bunch of trolls were like, how gross was that? You were trying to have sex with him. She's like, I w- uh, oh, you, uh, Nick, uh, you're on the social media. Uh, you have this? Uh, uh, yeah, because it's. Uh, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, she denied it on Twitter. You saw it on Instagram via at another Bachelor podcast. Oh, right. Spun over there. Uh, Click uh, follow. Uh, she tweeted, I never went to his room to take his virginity, you fucking trolls. I went there to show him I was serious and giving it my all. Her first period right there. And I left heartbroken, period. Colton touched my heart, Dash. He's amazing. He's an amazing all caps person. He showed me what a real man looks like, and I'm excited to feel that way again. Um, wow. It, well, the weird part of that. Tons of engagement. The on weird that part post. of that post is the positivity towards Colton, who just dumped you. So there's something weird there. I, I, I'm saying in a good way for her, though. She's playing it positive. I think because Colton really, I mean, he has no malice. I think he's just he's just floating. He doesn't know what to do. He's, yep. a, he's an empty vessel. Uh, he breaks up with her fairly easily. Yeah. Um, he doesn't really have a tough time with it. Um, she is devastated because her ego is bruised uh, like a mishandled plum. Uh, <laughs> it is not that she really, really loved him. I think it's because she had boasted and was such a braggadocious character and then left in one of the most embarrassing fashions you could possibly leave the show in. Uh, But I'm still a fan of Demi, uh, kind of. One moment of clarity for me when he kicked her the fuck out was, holy shit, all the villains are gone now. Like, we're at that arc of the season where, I guess, the fun part is behind us this I, is, I don't know this is just the worst fucking season ever um i think there's still a chance uh heather could end up uh just uh uh one by one murdering every single yeah, one yeah you talking girls. about slendy I, yeah Flat head. slender man could be a fucking uh yeah. a fucking villain we well, got a real villain on our hands yeah um yeah, you know just like jim jones except everybody stabs one another they don't you know fuck him and then drink poison uh you know what uh nick let as far as villains, actually, we ha- we do have the two pageant queens. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll I'll trump them over the uh, the Heather G thing. Uh, the two pageant queens. I'm I'm starting to sway to where I've went back and forth and with who was the catalyst of the uh, the beef between Kalen and Hannah B. And I'm starting to think Kalen is the one that has some darkness inside. One thousand percent. Um, amicable parting at the end, but uh, she gets back to the girls, um, and this poor thing says. No one ever loves me back. I think that that's there's some truth in that. I think that she's kind of grew up with that feeling um, in and around her, and it it makes me sad that Demi's, you know, gone through what she's gone through. See you in paradise, sweetie. 
I, I think she finds uh, bravery in her bravado. Yeah, uh, that's what that's that's the coat of armor she puts on to yeah. shield herself. And, and I think we saw some of the cracks in that armor. Yeah, chinks, tonight. if you will. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, thank God she is not Asian. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, God bless Demi. We'll we'll see you in paradise. We'll see you in paradise. Um, miss you. Next day, uh, Colton once again, guys, if you can believe it, uh, divulges his greatest fear uh, ahead <laughs> of the rose ceremony. Uh, Shitface comes in uh, with an announcement. No cockies, uh, just roses, or lack thereof for one of you. Um, Pat, we need a roll call. Who's staying? <laughs> roll call here. Who's staying? Hannah B, why so serious? Because she looks like the Joker. That was okay. an earlier reference. Uh, Callbacks, love them. Ka- Kaylin, uh, Cassie, of course, you're probably going to win this thing. And, and Heather, uh, flathead. Katie goes home. The Tang. <sighs> Who do you guys have winning really quickly? Um, uh, We've talked about this. I know, I know. But just who's winning? Hannah G. Oh, yeah. Cool. Me too. Uh, you want uh, The ultimate uh, callback will be uh, why you kick Katie out. Uh, she's got a good uh, jab and a right hook. Right, right, and, right, right. Uh, to not, the body, no less. Yes, and he yes. does not want to be staring this down in you know, two yes, or three Yes, of years. course. And, you know, he's he's more uh, susceptible to uh, internal damage and uh, vital organ shutting down um, via merciless and numerous body shots because he has no abs. Uh, I, I, I think it's a common misconception that uh, extra flab is going to give you protection. Right. Uh, that, yeah. that, that will do nothing. <laughs> that will only be thrown into those vital organs right. that will yeah. shut your body oh, down. Oh, yeah. Lend oh. me your fat and momentum. <laughs> yeah. Right. And more power. E- your power plus my power equals my power. <laughs> it's one of the tenets of Hopke Dog. Of Vovina. Uh, I thought it was the ex- exact opposite, Nick. I, I one time thought that uh, the fat around my liver uh, would pr- uh, pr- protect me from dying a horrible, torturous death of alcoholism. That could be. That could be true. That oh. could be true. Mm-hmm. Um, Katie uh, is. The last girl to tell him to be careful because there are some people who are not ready. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, as we mentioned, um, guys, Colton is, I mean, this is a, this is his greatest fear. Um, and w- with three people just plucking at his strings, I mean, man, this guy's out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> this was, by the way. Bad form on Katie. I know you just got kicked the fuck out. Do you really got to turn around and give him the cautionary warning of She's there's girls here? She's got a piece in her ear. Producers are like, say it. Uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. He I comes didn't. back to uh, tell the girls, um, you know, once again about his biggest fear. And uh, the, the, this prompts some conspiring. And ladies, do not pick up that sword and try to illuminate the people who are not ready for him. This this was a move to start getting more drama infused in the house. Because yeah, I think the, you're right. Because the ultimate uh, villain has left Demi. There's no more fun to be had here. Now we got to turn all the girls on them on each other. Right. A uh, smart move, I guess, for them. Very crafty from the, uh, the Svengali's. Very, very crafty stuff. Um, all right, that's the end of the episode. That's it. Yeah. Um... Looking forward to next week. It's a lie because uh, this show is. I mean, uh, thank you for sticking with us, guys. Uh, we hope that it gets better. Um, obviously, this is still um, ABC's The Bachelor, not us. Right. Yes, of course. I was about to uh, uh, rather egomaniacally say that this show is only getting better. Um, all right, that is it for us this week. Uh, we will see. Oh my God, Nick. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I almost passed over a fan favorite segment called "Errors and Omissions." You almost is, omitted. I all you say? dare I say omitted uh, a, a pretty intricate uh, bit that <clears throat> still remains a little heady, I think, for a lot of people. But if you could break it down and just get into it, uh, that would be. Uh, I think everybody would like to listen to that. Errors and omissions is the bit he's talking about, of course, and it is a. Uh, where I point out places we erred and things we omitted. Right. And uh, I, I'm not going to lie to you. There was there was a lot of production behind the scenes last week. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to get into the to the weeds. Right. But uh, let's say it was cut a little short. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of things we've er- a lot of places we erred and a lot of things we omitted. Yeah. Uh, but hey, 
you guys are gonna baby birds you're gonna have to wait one more week because yeah. uh we went too long tonight yeah, uh, but know. uh hey it's gonna be a really fun segment next week yeah and it'll be in the middle of the episode yeah an opus uh rosetta stone of of uh errors and omissions uh, you guys think we're we're ignorant? We we talk over our butts, but we fact check it, and and we will yeah. we will fix our mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. It, we, it's journalistic integrity. Yeah, we don't just talk out of our butts. Okay, we uh, we're professionals and uh, uh, professionals saying goodbye. Uh, Nick, say goodbye. Goodbye, Pat. Say goodbye. See you guys. Bye. Bye.